Hello, this is Mr. Collier, and today we're doing some basic probability calculations with some two-way tables and some Venn diagrams. Okay, so firstly, to start off, uh, let's just build this up logically for some coin flips, one of the simplest uh, types of probabilities there are. For a coin flip, you either have heads or tails, so if you were to flip a coin 100 times, you would obviously get about 50 heads, because the probability is 50 out of 100, or half, is a 50% chance of getting a heads or tails any time. And if you increase the number of flips you do, you get closer and closer to this 50% uh, value. Okay, many probabilities are too, calculated to, uh, too difficult to calculate, and so you have to repeat a trial many times, like repeat a coin flip many times. This is called a Monte Carlo method. Um, and experimental probability is kind of probability that you can only calculate through experiment, like the percentage of time you hit a basket when you shoot a field goal in basketball. The only way to calculate that is if you try it many times and then work out the percentage, and that's your probability. Okay, so let's look at expected value or expected number of successes. If something has a 0.2 probability of success and you do it 10 times, then you should obviously have a 10 times 0.2. Uh, you, get, uh, you get two from that. Okay, and then for 260, you also just do 260, and 20% 20, 20 of the time you'll, you'll succeed, so you just do 0.2 times this, and you get 52 times. Okay, how many times would you expect to get a one when you roll a die 180 times? Well, one sixth of the time you should get a one, so it is one sixth times 180, which is 30 times. If you get 30 times, you would roll a one, 30 times you would roll a two, and so forth. They're all 30, they add up to 180. Okay. So next, this uh, one way to show all the probabilities with a sample space, sometimes that's the best way to do it. So if you flip a coin twice, these are the possibilities. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. So you can work at any probability with this uh, sample space. For example, um, if you, oh, sorry, find the theoretical probability of one head and one tail, well, that is both of these here have one head and one tail. So it is two out of four or half or even 50% if you like. Okay, now if we flip a coin three times, we have these possibilities. You could have heads, heads, heads. You could have one head, or sorry, one tail and two heads. And you could do that three ways. You could have two tails and a head. And then we'll just rotate this head here. Or you can have tails, tails, tails. So there's a total of eight uh, possible outcomes in the sample space. So the probability of at least one head, at least one head means one head or two heads or three heads. There's seven of those out of eight. Or you could do one minus this, there's only one way that can't happen. So seven out of eight ways that does happen. So that's how you work at some simple sample spaces. It also works well for rolling two dice. If you want the total score, or the sum of the scores, you can make a table and there's 36 possible outcomes. One plus one is two, and then one plus two is three. Okay, and then we uh, have two and two is four. You get this symmetric sample space. So I'm gonna fill those in. Notice here you got one plus six is seven. We're gonna have a lot of sevens. That's why it's the most likely outcome. Okay, so it's very symmetric and easy to fill out. Okay, and there's only one way to get 12. That's if you roll a double six. So the probability of getting that is one out of 36, very unlikely. So the probability of getting a seven you can see from the sample space, 
we have six sevens. So it is six out of 36. And then the probability of getting a five, uh, well, we can check that out. We got one, two, three, four fives. So it's four out of 36. Given that the score on the first dice is a four, find uh, the probability that the total is eight. So if the first die is a four, the only way to get eight is if the second one is a four. So this is equal to, well, there's only one way for it to happen. But the first die is a four, so the first die could be four, and then the second one could be a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So there's six possibilities. It's actually just equal to the probability of getting a four on your second roll, right? So that makes sense. Uh, what's the probability that it will be odd? So odd. So all the possibilities are, uh, let me write them out. You could have a four and then a one, uh, four, two, there's six possibilities. You could have a four, six. So we're gonna get this table up here actually. Uh, for an odd sum, we have one, two, three odd sums. So it's actually just three out of six, which equals half. Okay, here we're gonna make a two-way table, because in this question we have British, American, Spanish students, and we have male and female. So you can make a table like this, where we have uh, British, American, Spanish, and male, female, and fill in the information. There's 30 students, now there's 10 British, but we don't know if they're male or female. So let's go down to this last information. 18 of the students are female, and of these, six are British. Three are, uh, sorry. Six are British, three are Spanish, and they have to add up to 18. So 18 minus these numbers gives you a nine. Okay, and then we could go back and look at this information. We have 10 British, so that's gotta be four, so these add up to 10. This has gotta be a six, so they add up to 15. And this one here has got to be a two. And then you can double check, all these numbers will add up to 30. So we have that filled in correct. And now we can work out these probabilities. So if you randomly pick a student, what's the probability that's an American female? Well, American female is just six of them. So it's six. So the probability of American and female is six out of 30. They are Spanish given they are male. Unless this is the notation. Probability Spanish given male. This symbol means given. So we're some given information. So we're given male. So that means we only look at the males. The, the males are, there's 12 of them. So your denominator is 12. What's the probability one of those 12 people is Spanish is two. So that probability is two over 12. Complementary events, uh, well, let's take a look at this. Rolling a die, the probability of scoring a six is one sixth. Then the probability of, so let's write this probability of six equals one sixth. Probability of not scoring a six, and this is the notation, not six, is obviously five over six. Okay, and those probabilities have to add up to one. Okay, so the probability of winning a race equals one third, then probability of not winning equals two thirds. They have to add up to one because they're complementary events. So the probability of not A is one minus probability of A because they add up to one. And that's like a formula, that's in our formula booklet. Okay, let's look at Venn diagrams and Let's look at these sets. We're going to set of integers from 1 to 10. Okay, let's draw sets A and B. In A, we have 3, 6, and 9, and here's B. In the middle, we have to have the overlap, which are elements that are in both, so the 6s are in both. And let's fill in the rest of A is 9 and 3. The rest of B are 2, 4, 8. And 
but remember we're looking at the numbers one to ten. So the rest of the numbers have to be on the outside. One, three, four, five, seven, and ten. Okay, so we have the diagram filled out. N represents the number of elements in a section, in a set. So the number of elements in A is obviously three. So the number of elements in not A is seven because there's a total of 10 elements. To get the probability of A happening, you get the number of elements in A and divide it by the total number of elements, which is 10. So the number of elements in A is three like above. So it's three tenths is the probability of selecting an element from A. Okay, and not A, well that's everything else. So that's one minus three over 10 which equals seven over 10. Okay, the probability of A and B. So A and B, let's sh I'll show that what that looks like in a diagram. It's the intersection, we call it too. We call it the intersection, or probability of A and B is the intersection. There's only one element in the intersection, so that's one tenth. This is union. It is probability of A or B or both. So that is actually probably of A or B or both. It's this, the whole thing there. So if we look back at the picture, this is, uh, there's six numbers here. So it is six over 10. Okay, here's a question in context where we're talking about cauliflower and broccoli. And if students like those, we can make a Venn diagram for that with broccoli cauliflower. Okay, so here we have, let's look for some good information, five students like broccoli and cauliflower. So we can put that five right there. And we have 10 students like broccoli. So this whole circle has to be 10. This must be five. 14 students like cauliflower, then this must be a nine. There's 24 students. So this only adds up to 19. So we got five outside here that don't like broccoli or cauliflower. Okay, let's work at these probabilities. Probability of A and C is the intersection. So it's just five over 24. Probability of B union C is everything in both circles. It's probability of things in B or C or both. So it is 19 out of 24. Now, the next one is not B and C. So B and C is five. So that equals one minus probability of, of that, right? So there's five in the intersection. That means there's 19 that's not in the intersection. And we have this probability of 19 over 24. Okay, the context, let's just talk about the context of the last one. This is the probability Uh, randomly select a student. Uh, doesn't like broccoli and doesn't like cauliflower. Right? This is not B and C. A randomly selected student doesn't like, let's say, doesn't like either. Okay, next. Uh, we have houses painted white and houses with a garage. So let's draw a Venn diagram. White garage, 16 houses, 11 painted white, seven have a garage, two are neither painted white or have a garage. So two is out here for sure. Now we can't just put 11 and seven here, then the numbers don't add up to 16. And the numbers right here now, uh, 11 and that, that's 20. This has a 20, that's four more than we need. So that means four goes into the intersection. Okay, and then there's 11 white houses, so seven's gotta go there. There's seven that have a garage, so three goes there. And these numbers all add up to 16, everything works out. We got 11 here, seven here, so this is correct. And now we can answer part B. Find the probability that a house painted white has a garage. So at first glance, it might look like we're looking for the probability of white and garage. 
But actually, we're, we know the house is painted white, so that's a given thing. We're looking for the probability of a garage given white. We're only looking at the white houses, which is the denominator. The number of white houses is 11. And the number of those white houses with the garage is actually just seven. Okay, so when we have a given probability or a given thing, the denominator changes because we're just looking at this circle and it's, this is going to be, oh, not seven, sorry, this is four out of 11 because there's four there with the garage. Okay, next, uh, next we're going to have a three-way Venn diagram. A Venn diagram with three circles. So let's be careful to leave enough room to put the numbers inside. And we're talking about three holidays, summer, Christmas, spring. Uh, summer, Christmas, spring. Okay, and if we read the information, we have, we want to look for all three if possible, or neither. Those are the words we're looking for. Uh, okay, two went away and all three. That's where we start. So two goes there. And now we have six went away in Christmas, summer and Christmas. So summer and Christmas is here, this section. So we need four there so that these two numbers add up to six. Five went spring and summer. Spring and summer is here. This should be five, so this must be three because this has to be five. Six in Christmas and spring. Christmas and spring should be six, so that's got to be four. 14 go away in summer holidays. So this should be 14, this whole circle. Uh, right now we have nine. So we need uh, five there. Okay, next we have 16 in the summer holidays. So this should have 16 here. And this is already 10, so we need six there. And um, 11 go away in the spring holidays. So this should have to 11. Circle shaft 11, we have, um, right now we have nine, so this should be a two. There's a total of 30, total of 30 students. So if we add up all these numbers, we get 26, so there's a four outside here. And now we can work out these probabilities here. So what's probably a random, randomly selected student goes on summer holiday and Christmas, you add together all the numbers in summer and Christmas and we get 24 over the total which is 30. Now in part B, he or she goes abroad given, watch out for that word, that they go abroad in summer. So probability of spring given summer. So you look at the just the summer people. We know they went away in summer, so we're just looking at this circle here. So the denominator becomes 14. Okay, and which ones go abroad in spring are five of them. Five of those go away in spring. So we got five out of 14 is the probability. Notice that we have conditional probability that the denominator changes because we're only looking at a certain, certain section. Uh, it kind of narrows down the possibility. So that denominator always changes.